Hi, welcome to the walkthrough of the Ivory Biology IA data analysis section. So this is the second section in your IA. Um, it's worth six marks again, and it's split up into a few sections. The results, the graph, uh, stats test, and the interpretation of your uh, results. Um, here's just the, the general IA overview if you want to stop and read. And here's the information on the data analysis and the marking of the data analysis. So these are your marking criteria. Um, your marker will decide which band you fall into, and then when you fall into the upper or lower um, limits of that band. So it's useful just to refer back to this when you're writing your IA, so you know exactly that, or you're sure that you're hitting all of those level descriptors in order to get five or six out of six. Okay, first section is the results table. Now, this is the data table checklist. So all of the things that I usually have to pick out and um, annotate when I'm when I'm marking the IAs, um, and I tell the students to do it over and over, and then when I come to mark, they've missed out these really basic things like again and again and again. So these are just kind of results table basics. So your first results table will be your raw data table. So no process data, only raw data. These, This is your little checklist. We're going to have a look at a table now and think about which parts of those checklist, uh, which parts of that checklist we've got and what's missing. So if this is our data table here. Remember, you need at least 25 pieces of data. So we recommend five manipulations of the independent variable and five repeats. So already we haven't got five repeats, which is an ideal. Um, we do have the independent variable in the left-hand column, though. We have units in the headings and not in the body of the table. So you can see that we've got degree C here. We've got seconds here. There's no degree C or seconds within the body of the table. That's a good thing. We've also got uncertainty in the column headings. Uh, there's a slide a little bit later on about how to calculate the uncertainty. Um, and we've got no process data in the raw data table, which is good as well. Only raw data, only measured data, process data will be later. So we can see that this table is kind of average. It's not great. Uh, there's some real basics that have been missed out. But if we have a look at this here, we've got those four already. We now have um, descriptive column headings. So before this just said time but we've now got time taken for milk and trips in solution to turn colourless. So that's a descriptive heading. We've got temperature of the water bath, also descriptive. You should kind of, as a marker, I should kind of know what your um, IA is from the headings here. So as a teacher, we've seen lots of IAs. We can kind of already work out what you're going to be doing in your IA from those descriptive column headings. Um, you can also see as well that this has been split. So you can see it's the trial one, two, three, four, five. Um, rather than just leaving that blank there. So try and do that too. Um, decimal places are also all, also consistent throughout here. So you can see that the uncertainty is plus minus 0 0.5 seconds to one decimal place. I've therefore changed all of these results to one decimal place. So even uh, 28 becomes 28.0 to one decimal place. Um, so that needs to be consistent. It's a really easy win with your results table, but it's the kind of thing that I send students away to change um, again and again. Uh, we've also got some qualitative data um, here. So you need quantitative and qualitative data. Uh, this qualitative data, to be fair, is quite brief. Um, but as long as you've got some sort of qualitative observations, that's good. So qualitative data is your kind of uh, what you can see, color changes. I've got some things about condensation in there. There's some precipitate, things that you observe that aren't uh, quantitatively measurable. Uh, the only thing that we're missing here is the uncertainty calculations aren't displayed below the table and that's just because the next slide shows you how to do uncertainty um, and then you can display it after that. This is uncertainties, it's super basic. Um, this is how I get my students to do it and I've never been pulled up on doing uncertainty this way so my advice would be uh, go simple, don't try and overcomplicate it. I'm not going to read through that, you can read through it. Okay, after our raw data table, we've also got a process data table. So at this stage, um, we have done something with the data. I've just noticed some uh, mistakes there, actually. Uh, apologies. Um, so your process data table is separate to the raw data table. We are not putting those together. We're not putting any process data in with the raw data. 
Um, the process data table should include mean standard deviations at the very least and any other relevant calculations. Now, in this investigation, you can calculate rate of reaction. So therefore, um, we've got all of these calculations as well as the mean and the standard deviation. Um, the error that I just saw was that this one and these two here are to the wrong amount of decimal places, so noted. Um, standard deviations and means could be calculated using Excel, but you must show some of the calculations. So you can see at the bottom here, I've shown the um, command that I used in order to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. That's fine, that's enough. I've calculated rate of reaction as 1 over t here. Um, lots of IAs lend themselves to this rate of reaction calculation. Um, you might have some uh, index of diversity calculations, depending on what you've done. Um, but you don't have to have this section. Some process data tables would just have a mean and a standard deviation, and that's absolutely fine. This is just a nice example of any additional calculations. OK, on to the graph. So you need to make sure that you choose the correct graph. If um, you have discrete categories, then it's probably going to be a bar graph and you'll have your discrete categories along the bottom. Um, if you have numerical values on your X and Y axis, then it's likely it's going to be a scatter graph or a line graph. Uh, you need to make sure the axes are correctly labeled with units. So you can see that we've got mean rate of reaction here, 1 over T, temperature, degree C. Um, I've used Excel to draw the graph. There is uh, a trend line there, there's a, a curve on there. I'm not, I haven't plotted any raw data on the graph, so too many times I get um, an IA handed in and there are five, six, seven, ten graphs and we've got um, one graph is each trial or the raw data on there, or I get one graph and it's got ten trend lines on it all in various different dashes and colours and it's difficult to read so you do not put raw data on a graph because that's not going to enable you to see the trends as well as if you're plotting means um, you can see that I've got some standard deviation bars included on there um, you can do that on Excel um, my advice would be if you don't know how to do it watch a video very closely because it's actually quite straightforward um, the graph needs to be a sensible size that's not as much of an issue now as it used to be because you can have as many pages as you want. Previously, there were only 12 pages and you sometimes got some teeny tiny graphs um, in order to save space. Um, and then only one graph. So the vast majority of IAs only need one graph. Sometimes there might be a reason for two, but I don't think you need any more than two graphs in your IA. Um, don't give me pages and pages and each page has six graphs on. We don't need it. And then just as an addition, a bar graph might also have a trend line, but it doesn't have to. Um, and on the bar chart, discrete categories shouldn't have touching bars. So um, if like the categories are colour, for example, or a genre of music, they're discrete, um, the bars aren't allowed to touch. OK, stats test. Um, there are additional videos on how to do each stats test in far more detail with examples. So by all means, go and watch those if you need to. But you need to make sure that you choose the correct statistical test and your teacher should help you do this. Um, common stats tests are t-test, chi-squared, uh, Spearman's rank or a correlation coefficient and the ANOVA test. Um, you need to say in your IA why you've chosen a particular stats test because this shows understanding. It shows that you haven't just thrown it in there with absolutely no idea as to why you've done it or what it means. Um, you need to state your null hypothesis, so that's usually there will be no significant difference between whatever your variables are. Um, I use this SOC size statistics um, website because you just punch in your data and they will throw out all of the calculations. Um, but you need to make sure that you cite the website um, when you do that. You must interpret the result correctly. So at this point, anyone really can throw some numbers into a website and screenshot it. You need to be able to explain what the results of that stats test means to your results. Um, so you have to interpret it and say whether you're going to accept or reject the null hypothesis that you previously outlined. Um, again, your interpretation shows that you've understood it. Uh, and see my statistical test videos for more details if you need it.